right, time to wrap up the lecture. Let's take a look at our takeaways and please let's clarify what we still struggle with so that we can find methods to better understand. But let's go to our final checkpoints, which are really limited for the single topic lecture. But nevertheless, let's go through them and let's understand that we now can certainly expand our equilibrium knowledge for simply supported hinged structures, right? That was obviously the topic of this entire lecture, so we are good to go there. And what we really need to understand is what the effect of the hinge causes in terms of the internal forces. That, again, was explicitly explained at the beginning of the lecture, so I believe we can all check that off. We also now understand why the hinge has an effect on the moment calculation, and that is that it is the moment is equal to zero and not the sum of the moments is equal to zero at the hinge, right? So please understand the difference between the moment is equal to zero and the sum of the moments is equal to zero. While that is true, it is not the reason for everything we've done in this lecture. And of course, we also understand that that has no impact on the normal or the shear force diagram. So those can be treated as always. So you see it's actually not that much that we have to consider in context of this lecture. But at the end, we are now able to draw our internal force diagrams for hinge structures. And so we know now how to apply the knowledge with a hinge in a simply supported beam or in a beam structure, I should say, so that we can identify and calculate all significant values. So those are really the goals that we covered in this lecture and I believe we reached our learning tasks here. If we can check all of these checkboxes off. The reason you want to really do this and really understand this is because in our future lectures we will take it up a notch as we always do and we will move from horizontal beams to structures that actually have two dimensions. So I'm talking about columns and beams connected. So we will talk about frames, in other words, and also about hinged frames. And to follow me there in those following lectures, it's good if you have a solid understanding of everything we talked about here. While in this lecture, it was probably just a tiny addition to your current knowledge. In the future lectures, when we talk about orthogonal hinged frames, you really want to have a solid working understanding of the methods that we have developed. And then our last topic before we move into our exam is actually non-orthogonal hinged frames. But of course, we will take it step by step and I will see you in those lectures. Let's now take a look at the homework that relates to these topics that we covered today. All right, time to look at our favorite page, the homework page, for which we are still interested in internal forces, but now we'll look at advanced topics. And hopefully the hinge beams are really not too advanced to you. Hopefully this will, homework will be a walk in the park for you. But in our upcoming homeworks, as I mentioned to you before, we will deal with frame structures and you really need a solid understanding of everything we talked about before. So that's why I was nice enough to only assign four homework problems this time around so that you can really spare some time here but at the same time dive deep into all the procedures that we have used before so you can apply them properly and on your following homework you get six frames but then the last homework before the exam you will only in quotation mark get two problems and that then should give you some time to find additional preparation for your upcoming exams. But let's talk about these problems real quick here. So the first problem is a hinged beam and the hinge here is located at B. Um, this is what you would replace with the circle. You have a cantilever support on the left or a fixed support on the left and then a roller on the right. So once you draw the free body diagram for this one, this should really be a walk in the park according to what we just talked about in the lecture. Let's take a look at problem B, actually fairly similar, except students are sometimes confused when they cut through the hinge and there's a continuous load acting on the 
structure or past the hinge, which here is at location B. But don't get confused. Just do intuitively what you normally would do. Cut through the system. For example, let's say you release the right side or you release the left side. Whichever side you release, just treat it as an individual independent subsystem in which you then release the internal forces and calculate everything as you normally would do. So don't get confused by the image. It is all the same at the end. All right. Here we have similar problems just shown in a different symbolic representation. Here we have a cantilever beam that supports a simply supported beam. Now you also have to deal with normal force cases due to the force that is acting under an angle alpha. I think this should be straightforward if you followed the examples that we discussed in this lecture. Last problem for this current homework is a little bit different, but I think we talked about this throughout the lecture as well, so it shouldn't be too much of a challenge. It should be more practice than anything else. But here we have a simply supported beam on the left side. This could be considered a simply supported beam with an overhang and then that overhang supports the hinge or the simply supported beam on this side. So hopefully these problems appear as practice and not too much as a challenge to you. But of course, learning and practice makes perfect. So I wish you good luck with this and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lecture when we start talking about orthogonal frames. Until then, stay safe.